Hello, Leon here from backintelligence.com where we help people manage their back pains as well as correct their postures. And today uh, we have Dr. David Oliver who's gonna be talking to you about lumbar facet joint pain relief, yeah? He's gonna be giving you uh, the symptoms associated with this condition as well as some of the best exercises that you can do with me demoing them so that you can start getting some relief. Let's get started. So we're gonna talk about lumbar facet pain and ways you can deal with it at home. So essentially, what is facet pain? So if we look at your spine, we look at the vertebrae. On the back side of the spine, where these vertebrae connect together are called your facet joints. They're right here. So what we see is around that joint, there's actually a capsule around there. And that capsule and that joint itself can get very irritated and inflamed. It's most often seen with more symptoms if you go into extension. So what you're doing is you're compressing those facet joints together and people will often feel more pain and more discomfort. A lot of times if they go into extent or flexion and they get out of that position, it actually feels a little bit better. Not always, but a lot of times it does. But most people are going to experience an increase in pain or an increase in symptoms as they go into extended positions. So it's that extension again as you take your vertebrae and you compress them together causes more pain. So we're looking for activities that do that. So if you're in an extended position or you sleep on your stomach and you generally have a lot more pain, you may be experiencing this facet syndrome and these exercises and stretches may provide a lot of relief. With this type of condition, what we're gonna experience are a variety of symptoms. It could be one-sided, it could be on both sides, it could be into your legs, it could be just in your back. It could be anything from just general pain to numbness to tingling to burning. Most often when it goes into your legs, it does not go below the knees, and it usually doesn't follow a specific line or pathway as most lumbar disc herniations and that sort of thing will. You'll see a more specific pathway with that, whereas with this, it's more generalized, but not always. So the key as we're going through some of these exercises and stretches is making sure they do not increase any of your symptoms, especially into your leg. If you feel increased symptoms with anything we're talking about today, you don't wanna continue doing that, and you may want to get a consult to see what's really going on in your back. All right, so the, for the first exercise we're going to go with to deal with this facet-mediated pain is going to be the child's pose. So it's a good exercise to kind of take your back out of an extended position and flex it a bit. So again, this should provide good relief. So Leon starts on his knees. He's going to reach forward, and he's going to try to get close to the ground with his body. He's getting his butt towards his heels. And again, he's rounding up through here. So again, we're not in an extended position, so there's no curve down in this low back. And if anything, he's rounding up and pushing up into this. So he can hold this position and just breathe. You can go 30 seconds or so, or you can add a little bit of motion, which is sometimes good for this too. So if you come back up, Leon, to kind of more of an all fours position, and then as he sits back, he's actually going to take his pelvis and tuck up. See how he's rounding that out a bit? And he tries to maintain that while he sits his butt towards his heels. He's going to get a stretching effect going on here, which is all you should be feeling. And he sits back and forth. So you can go in and out of this five times or so, or you can hold and maintain that bottom position. You should not see any increased symptoms with this. If you do in your back or your legs during it or afterwards, it's not a good exercise for you. And don't do it. So perfect, nice and easy back and forth. And again, if he wants to just hang out in that bottom position and just breathe and open up this area, it might help a lot with these symptoms. All right, so the next exercise we're gonna go for to deal with some of that facet pain is the pelvic tilt. So you're gonna lie on your back, knees bent, feet on the floor, heads nice and comfortable and relaxed. And essentially your pelvis, which is this area here, you're just gonna start tilting it. We're really emphasizing the posterior tilt of that pelvis. So what that does, when you posterior tilt your pelvis, it flattens your back towards the ground here. Whereas if you anterior tilt it, you'd get a big gap in here. We're not looking to go into the anterior tilt really because again, that's that extended position that may irritate you. So generally what we're gonna have you do is we're gonna go from the hips here and we're gonna flatten down and you're bringing your ribs down a little bit and you're just maintaining that position and then you're up and down out of that. Your job is to determine where, if anything, it doesn't feel good. So if you go into that upward position or that anterior tilt and you feel a little irritation in your back, don't push into that. Just stop and go the other way. So we're just gently trying to move through the range of motion that's comfortable to you. This should not be painful. If anything, it should feel good. And when you get done, it should feel good. You shouldn't feel increased symptoms. Perfect. Nice and slow. And you're just controlling that pelvic position. This is a good way to alleviate some of that irritation in that low back. 
Perfect. And there's no set number with this. You could do 10, 15, 20. It's up to you. Whatever feels good. You're not going to do too much of this if it feels good to you. This is an easy one you can also do in bed. So before you get out of bed, if you tend to get a lot of pain when you first get up in the morning, if you just sit there, put your knees up, bend, just spend about a minute or so just going through nice, slow pelvic tilting, you may find that getting out of bed is a little bit easier in the morning, which would be awesome. So the next thing we're going to deal with is trying to stabilize that spine. So a lot of times if we can increase the core strength around the spine, it can take a lot of pressure off of those facet joints. So one of the most basic but effective exercises is a plank. So Leon's going to go into a plank position here. The key is to maintain good core control and contraction. So you want to maintain your abdominal wall. You really want to feel this midsection here. You do not want to be feeling your back firing up. I like short planks, so I don't like you sitting there trying to hold a minute or two minute planks. So I'm going 10 or 20 seconds, and then I'm going to tell Leon to rest for a second. So rest down for a second, Leon. Good, he's going to offload the pressure. And you only rest for a second or two, and then engage your core, go back into it. So we like plank reps, not plank holds, because if you start to hold 30, 40 seconds, you're going to start recruiting your back. And you can see he's up a little high, but that's actually a good for this situation, if we have this facet syndrome, this is less taxing. If he dropped down, so if he was in a real sagged position here, this would be bad because he'd be putting more extension and compression. You can rest Leon, into this low back, which we don't want to do, right? With that facet syndrome, it's going to cause more pain. So again, he's going to cycle another one in there, so nice and tight, and he's going back up. He's a tiny bit high. He maybe come down a tiny bit right there. Is perfect. So we just, again, we're in an up position a little bit more than we normally would with a plank, but we're trying to offload pressure from those facet joints, and we're trying to strengthen it around it. He's doing totally fine with this. Short planks, 10 to 20 seconds, and you do what you feel comfortable with, and you rest. Perfect. All right, we hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give us a like, as well as uh, subscribe to this channel for more videos just like this. Also, uh, one of the most important things you need to do uh, in order to alleviate some of that low back pain is to stabilize your spine with uh, safe and effective core exercises. And we have a free PDF that we can send you with uh, six safe and effective core exercises that you can do at home. So if you'd like to get this PDF, it's completely free. We'd love to send them to you right away. There's going to be a link to it uh, somewhere here in the video or down below in the description. Just go to that page, enter your email, and we'll send you this PDF right away.